Hello, Brick Dark here, and today I'm reviewing the Lego Ninjago Legacy Samurai, the Samurai Max set. It has one minifigure, two skeletons, 154 pieces, and in the United States retails for $15, but you can probably get this for a little bit cheaper, like I did at Target. So here is Nia, aka Samurai X, and this version is currently exclusive to this set. It has a nice helmet design, which uses three pieces, the bucket handle piece, this piece, and um, this really weird piece gives a cool intimidating look. Underneath, you'll see Nia's face print. On one side, she looks very determined. And on the side, she looks very happy. This is, I believe, her face print from the Ninjago movie sets, though. Correct me if I'm wrong. She does have this very nice uh, armor piece, which is a nice mold. Doesn't come in too many cheap sets. Um, and then, if this can focus, you can see this nice reflective, like, gold dragon. Also, some nice armor printing as well, with a belt, some looks like sandals, and just a very nice samurai looking armor design, which is cool because we don't usually get that many samurai figures in Ninjago. We usually get just like the ninja, but it's always nice when we get samurai X, especially this first, not that weird techie version. But that's it for Nia, aka Samurai X. It's one of the skeletons, and it doesn't actually say which one this is. One of them's either Naka, and the other's, I think, Cruncher or something. It's weird. But anyways, their names don't really matter. Uh, this, he comes with a very cool bone axe piece, which is a symbol build using that long bone piece and the axe head. As for the figure himself, he is very cool design, and they use a new piece where they have this minifigure like head which looks really weird if you don't have something on it so it allows you to put stuff on instead of creating a bunch of new molds um, he has this mohawk piece in tan which may be exclusive to the set I'm not too sure also has this nice armor piece you can see a little bit of printing at the top there and what looks like a loincloth which I th would guess uh, makes him the fire Skeleton, because I remember uh, there was the skeletons that had the elemental abilities that matched those of the ninja. So, I don't know. This is just pure speculation. I'm not a huge fan of the Ninjago show. Um, but that's it for one of the skeletons. Other uh, skeleton. Um, he has a slightly different design. He doesn't have an eye patch. He also has a different weapon. He has this uh, massive, I think it's a scimitar in like a tan coloring which I've never really liked this piece because of just how stupidly big it is like the the axe works just fine because like you can see someone holding that but this this is just like straight up ridiculous it's got this tiny handle and this massive blade I don't like it um you can see that nice shoulder piece again some more printing this one's a bit more damaged uh what I would assume would make him the lightning skeleton. Um, the same piece that was used for Nia is his headpiece. Um, and yeah, just another very nice figure overall with a rather stupid weapon. But that's it for the figures. Now let's take a look at the build. The build for this is smaller than I expected, but I do think it works because Lego Max often nowadays are very massive and just very unwieldy. This I can like legitimately see being used because it's it's big enough so it's an intimidating thing, but it's also small enough so you can actually be agile with it, not just be the slumbering giant. But I guess we'll start at the feet. Uh, you can move the feet on ball joints, and you can also move the legs on ball joints. Um, the feet have an interesting design. They are always bent. Uh, moving up to the torso, and the legs are very sturdy, this thing, like, isn't going to fall anywhere unless you put it on one of the legs. You gotta play around with it, though. Um, anyways, you got a sticker here, let me just 
position it. So it's and another sticker here, which shows a similar design that was on Mia's torso. And this is the cockpit. If you want to get Nia in, just move that down. It's just attached via some clips. And Nia just attaches via some studs in there. So it, it's a very simple way, but it also works very well. Um, now we get to the kind of part I'm not too keen on, which are the arms. I think the arms look very skinny. Um, and this is the sword just attaches via clip. And the arm... Uh, the hands look extremely skinny as well. I do like these shoulder pad designs, which do have a sticker on both sides. Uh, but yeah, I don't really like how these arms look. This arm uh, has a similar problem, but it has these two katanas. On the box, it shows Nia holding these two katanas, so it uh, offers a bit of playability. On the top, there are these stud shooters, which just uh, can move. The way those work, you can just push them down and they shoot out the stud. Of course, a lot harder than that. And then the final part that I think we should take a look at is this flag up here. You can move it up and down. And it has a nice sticker on both sides. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for this build. It's a very nice build. Uh, it's it's sturdy and it also represents what it's trying to capture. They managed. I used to didn't like this set, but I think I really do like it now because uh, it's a lot sturdier than the Golden Dragon, which is the other legacy set I got. And it also is, um, I guess, just looks very like a nice design. Like I said before, smaller mechs like these I like better than massive over-the-top mechs because. These are actually something that could be useful. You could be agile with them while also being like a tank. Those big mechs, at, the, at that point, it's just like Attack on Titan or whatever that anime is called. But yeah, that's it for the build. The set. Let's take a look at the box and then some of the other paper material included. Box for this is, I think, like a battle pack box flipped up. So that's that's a cool design. On the back, it shows some of the features as well as where this appeared in the show. And, as with all these legacy sets, there's this QR code which you can scan on your phone or something and watch, I think, some episodes of the Ninjago show, which I think is really cool. A lot of nice, like, side box art as well. Uh, overall, very nice looking box design. The instructions were bigger than I thought they were going to be. Um, on the back, it shows you... Uh, about how you can use the QR code thing, but it doesn't have any ads for the other sets, which is a shame, as this was a particularly good way for Ninjago. So I gotta say, this set has really grown on me. I used to not really like it, but now looking at it, I, I really think it is superior to the Golden Dragon set from this year. There's a few small problems I have, mostly with the arms and the hands. They're so small, I, I don't know they like that design, but there's a lot of posability with this set. Uh, a lot of nice sticker detailing, and it's it's a very fair price, $15, and it's starting to go on sale, which is nice as well. Though all the exclusive figures are nice, especially in small $15 sets like this. And so I'm honestly going to have to rate this an 8 out of 10. It's a good set, and, it, and I do like it because it's a smaller mech. Um, again... The arms, the hands, I'm kind of eh on and this arm, especially without the katana in it, looks really bad. Um, but it's a fifteen dollar set, so I'll kind of let it pass. Other than that, though, it's not too much else I have to say about this. So, anyway, thanks for watching. See you guys later. Peace.